Hi, my name is Oleksiy Konashevich, and it is the second video in the series of videos devoted to the regulations in Australia. Today we discuss Chapter 2 of the report of the Select Committee on Australia as a Technology and Financial Centre of the Australian Senate, published in October 2021. Overview of Digital Assets, Markets and Regulation. We are not going to go through the whole chapter because it's long and it has different subtopics in it. So today we're talking about digital asset markets and different types of digital assets and opinions of the Australian regulators on this. A primary focus of this phase of committee's inquiry has been the regulation of digital and crypto assets in Australia. The committee has engaged deeply with industry players, big bodies, academics and regulators on these issues. The evidence the committee has received on these issues is covered over two chapters. This chapter provides an overview of digital asset classes and the current market uh, for these products in Australia and internationally. It then provides a broad summary of existing regulatory framework for digital assets in Australia and an overview of the frameworks in place in some other leading jurisdictions as highlighted by submitters to the inquiry. Chapter 3 then discusses options for reforming Australia's regulatory treatment of digital assets that uh, were raised in evidence uh, to the committee. This chapter we'll discuss another time. The Australian Securities and Investment Commission, ASIC, used the term crypto asset as an umbrella term to describe products that are also commonly referred to as digital assets, virtual assets or digital tokens. ASIC offered the following broad definition in its submission. A crypto asset is a digital representation of value or contractual rights that can be transferred, stored or traded electronically. Crypto assets use cryptography, distributed ledger technology or other technology to provide features such as security and pseudo-anonymity. A crypto asset may or may not have identifiable economic features that reflect fundamental or intrinsic value. And to be clear, ASIC noted that this definition is adapted from the UK HM Treasury's publication UK Regulatory Approach to Crypto Assets and Stablecoins Consultation and Call for Evidence, published in January 2021. ASIC noted that crypto assets are not a homogeneous asset class, stating the rights and features of each crypto asset can raise different considerations for consumers, product issuers and regulators. Crypto assets are commonly regarded as speculative assets with volatile prices and minimal to no regulatory oversight. Nevertheless, the senators included an overview of some common terms often discussed in the context of digital and crypto assets. Cryptocurrency The most well-established and highly traded digital assets are cryptocurrencies. The Reserve Bank of Australia, or RBA, described cryptocurrencies in the following terms uh, in its submission. Cryptocurrencies have their own currency unit and are not denominated in the currency of any sovereign issuer. The distinguishing feature of the most cryptocurrencies is that they utilize DLT, distributed ledger technology, and cryptography to store digital coin ownership records and transactions in a digital ledger that is distributed and synchronized across a number of nodes or computers rather than relying on a central party to operate the system. Bitcoin is the most prominent implementation of a decentralized cryptocurrency protocol, but thousands of variations have emerged. 
cryptocurrencies have no intrinsic value, are typically not issued by any single entity and effectively rely on users' complete trust in the software protocol that controls the system. The last sentence about no intrinsic value actually shows incompetence of RBA in this issue. I explained the real value of cryptocurrency in this video. Well, you can educate yourself and think yourself when you watch this video. Then the RBA states that while the term cryptocurrency may suggest these assets are form of money, the consensus is that existing cryptocurrencies do not provide the key attributes of money as they are rarely used or accepted as means of payment, are not used as a unit of account, and their prices can be very volatile, so they are poor store of value. And again, I can't agree with RBA's bureaucrats here. This type of causation error is called post hoc fallacy. So basically the problem here is that when they say cryptocurrency is rarely used and accepted as means of payment, I have to ask, how do you measure rarely? Is there any specific amount threshold after which you count it as money? The truth is uh, people do use it as payments. People use it as units of account. Their prices can be volatile as well as fiat money. Example, Venezuelan Bolivar. With this logic, Bolivar is not money. <laughs> A poor store of value? Well, again, if you say so as a, as a general unconditional rule, I have to disagree again. Because, well, I can refer to Bitcoin, a very good store of value. If you invested, and a, a good in, uh, investment, if you invested 10 years ago, $100, you'd be a millionaire now. So, all these arguments are irrelevant. There are different definitions of money. Cryptocurrency falls into a broad economic definition as well as shells or other exotic and historical forms of mediums of exchange. What is true about cryptocurrency? There is a lack of official status of legal tender in Australia. Legal tender means if you have payment obligations, you cannot pay in shells or whatever you want to pay. You can pay only in, or you may pay only in official recognized means of payments, which is official sovereign cryptocurrency. Uh, for example, El Salvador, Central American country, recognized Bitcoin as legal tender. So, RBA, probably you wanted to say that cryptocurrency is not money because you didn't officially recognize it. So, yeah, in this logic, yeah, it's, it's not money because you as a regulator don't want to. All right, let's get back to the report. In the next section, Senate writes that proponents of cryptocurrencies disagree with this assessment. Well, yeah. Uh, Bitaro, an Australian digital cryptocurrency exchange, submitted that Bitcoin, the world's most prominent cryptocurrency, provides users with better control over their own money and alternatives to traditional and often exclusive financial services. Proponents argue that cryptocurrency can assist traditionally underserved and unbanked populations to access payment mechanisms. Several submitters noted that El Salvador has recently classified Bitcoin as legal tender, with other countries also reportedly considering this classification. Decentralized finance Decentralized finance or DeFi is an emerging and rapidly evolving area of financial technology. DeFi encompasses a range of blockchain-based business models and structures, with the main common factor being that DeFi solutions all attempt to provide functions, analogies uh, to and potentially beyond those offered by traditional 
financial service providers without reliance on central intermediaries or institutions. DeFi aims to reconstruct and reimagine financial services on the foundations of distributed ledger technology, digital assets and smart contracts. The work on blockchain and digital asset project identifies six major DeFi categories. Stable coins, we'll discuss further below, decentralized exchanges for digital assets, credit products, derivatives, also known as synthetic financial instruments, insurance products, and um, asset management applications. The World Economic Forum notes that although examples of DeFi have existed for several years, there has been sudden upsurge of activity in uh, 2020, with the value of digital assets locked in uh, smart contracts growing to over 13 billion. Stable coins. Stable coins are a leading category of DeFi assets. According to ASIC, stable coins are a form of crypto asset that aim to maintain a stable value relative to a specified unit of account or store of value. Examples of these units or stores are as a national currency, commodity or other asset. Many other crypto assets have prices determined solely by supply and demand and can be volatile. In contrast to these crypto assets, stablecoins aim to maintain a specified price level. This makes them more attractive to hold as means of payment or store of value. Several stablecoins that aim to have their price pegged to the US dollar have gained prominence in recent times. There are no currently any stablecoins of significance linked to the Australian dollars, ASIC concluded. I should say that uh, I myself identified one stablecoin project with Australian dollar, Australian dollar token. I even had a conversation with its founder. He explained that um, ODT is not present on Australian crypto exchange, uh, Australian crypto exchanges as they freak out because of the complicated payment regulations in Australia. In the next video, we'll touch on that, by the way. Central Bank Digital Currency The RBA submitted that a central bank digital currency, or CBDC, represents a potential new form of digital money that would be a liability of or a claim on a central bank. The RBA also explained, this could include both retail CBDC, which would be like a digital version of cash that is essentially universally accessible, and wholesale CBDC, which would be accessible only to a more limited range of participants, but probably including some that do not currently have access to settlement accounts at central banks. Like cash and settlement account balances, the unit of account of the CBDC would be the sovereign currency, for example, the Australian dollar in this case. The CBDC would be convertible one for one with other forms of money and it would likely also be specified to serve as legal tender. The RBA stated that while much research is occurring internationally on CBDCs, including by the RBA uh, itself, only one country, the Bahamas, currently has a fully operational CBDC. The RBA noted, however, that People's Bank of China is in advanced stage of testing possible issues of uh, retail CBDC for digital yuan non-fungible tokens or NFTs. NFTs are crypto assets which may represent the original or licensed literary and artistic works of an author or authors or the unique contractual terms between parties. The most high profile examples of NFTs are digital artworks. However, NFT technology is broader than these 
as explained by FinTech Australia. NFTs is a description of the technology used where something unique or a record of something unique is maintained on a blockchain or distributed ledger. What NFT is depends on the nature of the information that is provided when an NFT is transferred or recorded. For example, NFTs underpin many blockchain use cases, such as in relation to supply chain management to track the movement of a particular good at a particular time or records of trademarks. Other NFTs exist purely in the digital realm, such as collector's items, such as JPEGs, images or rights in those images. Well, that's it. So if you see the report didn't elaborate on security tokens, even though it falls in a larger category of decentralized finances. They didn't mention utility tokens, surely apart from cryptocurrency and title tokens, what I discuss a lot on my channel. However, the senators uh, concluded in one of their recommendations that it is needed to undertake uh, a token mapping exercise to determine the best way to characterize the various types of digital asset tokens in Australia. So eventually we will see more structured and accurate asset classification. Well, I hope so. Meanwhile, in the future videos, we can do it ourselves. If you want to see this video, please support it with your thumbs up and subscribe. See you.